Hi. I uh, went back on an old chord progression I was working on a while back. It was, I think I actually even called it a minor blues. But what it actually is, is a minor blues. <laughs> and uh, so what I used was an A minor 7 chord. Now this is an interesting shape for that too. Because normally you would think of this as being G, C, E, A, right? But when you put it on these strings, it's really cool. So I'm on 10th fret, no, I'm, yeah, 10th fret on 5th uh, and 4th string, 9th fret kicking in on the 3rd string, and then back to the 10th fret. So you can almost look at it as if it was an E major 6 type of a shape. If I was down in an E chord and I throw the six on it, bam, throw it up here though. And the root, actually, ironically, is the pinky. So I have the flat seven G, and then I got the flat three C, then I got the five E, and the one A. And it's identical to this G, C, E, A. G, C, E, A. That's if I was doing this. All right, so doing that customary little minus seven, minus six type of thing. All right, so I like doing that. Now here's a two minor seven flat five. I'm doing a B seven, B minor seven flat five. And this is, um, I got the flat five F there. There's B, there's D. There's the flat three, and there's the flat seven. I'm going to take that into the Hendrix chord, sharp nine, E sharp nine, and then back into the A minor seven, back into the A minor six, right? So. Take that whole wide, the minor six form down like this, right? Let's take it down here and look at this. E, B flat. What if that was one and flat five, and then there's a D and a G, so that's flat seven and flat three. So this could be an E minor seven, flat five chord. Oh, and you know what? If I looked at this like this, then that same exact shape just turned into a A dominant seventh, sharp five flat nine. There's the G, there's the C sharp, F or E sharp, B flat, or flat nine in this case. All right, so that's a cool little thing. Now I'm looking at this as a D minor nine. into a G13. Um, this is another altered dominant seventh shape too. Um, using um, so I'm thinking this would be the flat seven three. There's your sharp five. There could be a sharp nine. Go like that. It's a flat nine. Right? This 13th chord. That's the good old diminished chord. So. Right. so those are all the shapes that I'm working with uh, in, the, in the course of this. And it's really cool how, you know, some shapes can actually become other chords Minus seven flat fives can really be a dominant seven flat nine, you know. So it's a uh, sharp five flat nine. So it's uh, it's really cool how you can rethink. Okay. Oh, and the other thing about this also is I had to uh, I could only do that like one round around, and then I had to do like just a series of two fives. Uh, to um, kind of break away, 
you know, so I'm just not doing this over and over and over again. So, so it goes like this all total. <laughs> So anyway, so I looped it as well. I put a little drum track and, and did the chord progression. So now I can play with it. And when I'm gonna play with it, I'm gonna play with that um, that E altered dominant. <laughs> right? So I'm gonna try and trick in some things like that. Right? And I think I'd like to even try some, some uh, West Montgomery octave voicings and see what happens. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 